we have our Angular template driven form here, let's talk about how we can do some validation. We'll do the first and probably most important validation. Let's do required. And that's how we define required. I'm going to break this out into multiple lines now. Now, the way this works is we're going to check for this input and we're going to say if it has errors, then we're going to show an error. And let's do an error here. The way that Bulma handles an error is help is error. Your name is required. So if I save that, this will show. But the thing is, is I only want to show this if they've already typed into it and their name is required, right? Angular has what's called directives where we can say over here, we're going to say ng if only show if this name input has errors. So let's deal with this. And the way we're going to do with this is we're going to create what's called a template variable name input. And this is so that we can reference this input from right here. We're going to say name input is equal to ng model. And what this does is it gives us a little bit of information about this input. So we can say name input dot invalid, then your name is required. So right now, name is required is going to show because this name input is invalid. And then if we start typing Chris, immediately that error message goes away because name input is now valid because we have a name typed into it. All right, this is great and everything, but if I refresh, name is required shows immediately. We only want to show that if somebody's actually typed into it or clicked into it and then clicked away because we know that they have been in the name input box. So we're going to say, and name input is dirty, which means that they were in the input box, had typed a little bit, removed it, and now it is required again. If we didn't want to have the requirement where they were actually typing, we could do touched. So that means they clicked into it, clicked out of it, name is required. So touched is a good one. And the classes that we have, or the states that we have is name input dot valid. And that's if it is valid or invalid. And then on the opposite side, right, is invalid. And then we have dirty, which is have they typed into it and then touched, which is have they clicked into the input box. And then also on the other side is untouched. And these are the kind of states that we have on our name input. And let's do name input. I just want to show off what's in here, errors. So name input that errors is an object, right? And we have this object here. Let's delete all this text, save. And all we have is object. If we want to show an object inside of our template, we have what's called a pipe. And let's say JSON pipe. And this is one that's built into Angular. And now we can see what's in that object. Required is equal to true. And that, since we're typing into it, there are no more errors, so this errors object is null. All right, let's do the same for our email input. We're going to make sure we spread this out. And then it's also going to be required and an email. And then we need to bind a local template variable to this, so we're going to say email input is equal to ng model. Now we can show our help box. So we say div class help is error. And we only want to show this ng if, and that's what's called a structural directive, which means we are going to change this HTML and show and hide it. Thanks to this star, we know that it's a structural directive. So we say email input dot invalid and email input dot touched. So here we'll say your email is required and needs to be an email. There we go. So it is required. So we already fulfilled that part of it, but it needs to be a valid email. So let's say be a valid email. And then let's show off this email input dot errors and we'll pipe it to Jason. All right, so email is true. So type into it required error is gone, but email is also true. So that is going to show this message here. And then you get the gist, you can add it for the message thing. But here, the last thing I want to do is make sure that this button 
is only clickable if our entire form is valid. And to do that, we are going to bind a template variable to our overall form. We're going to say contact form is equal to ng form. And now this contact form variable has all of the features of ng form. Let's go over here. We're going to say contact form dot invalid, or let's do valid. So right now, is it valid? No, it is not. It's false. So we're going to type into this, type into this. And then as soon as we have a valid email, now our contact form is valid. So I want to bind this variable to this button. So we're going to say, let's take that, remove that. I want to bind the disabled property. And only show disabled if contact form is, sorry, invalid. So when our contact form is invalid, this button is disabled. And that's how we bind to an attribute is these brackets. And that's what's called a property binding. So notice I can't click the send button. I'm going to type Chris, Chris at scotch. And as soon as I start typing a full email, this is valid. And then if I send, we can have this. My message is undefined. My name is Chris. My name, email is chris at scotch.io. All right, that's how we validate our contact form for template-driven Angular forms.